Awareness slowly returned as a frantic girl's voice cried, Chip, where are you? Chip, he thought. Yes, that's my name. But who's that shouting? And where am I? Groping for his glasses and staggering to his feet, he looked around, quickly spotting the loudspeaker in the ceiling that led in the urgent voice. Would it let him answer? Clearing his unnaturally parched throat, he croaked, Hello? The voice responded instantly in tones of sharp relief. There you are! What happened to you? the girl demanded. No clue, he said, squinting blearily at the sterile tiles and plain gray walls surrounding him. I was hoping you could tell me. Who are you, anyway? There was a startled pause, then she replied in hurt tones. Are you a right ship? Don't you know me? Melinda, your friend and fellow bitbuster? Melinda. The name stirred in a strange rush of warm feeling in him, an almost recognition, vague as a dream. I don't know. I'm all right, but everything's hazy. I can't seem to remember anything. What am I even doing here? You volunteered! You're supposed to be testing the Bitbuster's new clubhouse challenge before we turn it loose on the recruits. But we lost contact with you right before you after you went inside. And then another emergency came up. Her voice broke off, leaving Chip to wonder. Clubhouse challenge? Recruits? What's going on here? Then she was back, sounding urgent. Chip, I'm sorry. I'm needed elsewhere. You're going to have to get through the first few levels on your own, with or without your memory. But you're good at this. I know you can do it. Somehow, even in the haze of his non-memory, Chip felt a strange certainty that he could trust this girl, and that she would rather do anything than betray her confidence in him. Shaking the cloudiness from his mind, he stated, All right, tell me what to do. Warm pride filled her voice as she replied, Don't worry, we're going to figure out what caused this amnesia and how to reverse it. But until then, you're going to have to start again at the beginning and learn all the rules of the challenge. Fortunately, the first ten levels were designed to help recruits do just that. In each of these levels, look for a hint. It will provide you with information on how to get past the challenges in that level and reach the exit square. But be careful, some things in the clubhouse can be a little unsafe. Just read the hints and you should be fine. Now I really have to go, but I'll catch up with you in a few levels. Good luck, Chip. With a crackle of static, the speaker shut off. Feeling very alone, Chip turned his attention to the room surrounding him. Two locked doors of differing colors led into the unknown, and there between them lay what must be the promised hint. Gathering his resolve, he went over to read it. His past lay frighteningly shrouded in mystery, but he sensed that answers waited in the challenge before him. Could he be clever enough and strong enough to solve the puzzles both ahead and behind? There was only one way to find out. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Ship's Challenge Level Pack 1. That's right, I am finally doing this Let's Play, or at least starting this Let's Play again, after a, a failed attempt several months ago. Uh, for those of you who didn't uh, hear the story behind what happened with that, I had just finished recording Chips Challenge Level Pack 3, the set that chronologically preceded this in terms of release, and uh, I wanted to do this one next, so I started recording a couple of videos. Well, around that time, I decided to update my iMac, where I was recording all this stuff. And after the update, turns out, Tile World didn't work on it anymore. Now, obviously, uh, there was a solution in the form of recording on a virtual PC on the Mac, but that was rather unreliable, and I couldn't really get it to work properly. However, that year, I also got a PC of my own, um, on which I eventually LP'd Abduction and all the other games that you've been seeing here this year. And I wanted to do that mainly to take a little bit of a break from Chip's Challenge, but I think now is a good time to be back and to do this set. So, a little bit of background on Chip's Challenge Level Pack 1. I'm going to go ahead and start this Let's Play as if the other videos I'd recorded had never happened. In fact, I don't even remember what was in them, so for all I know, I may have never said any of this before. So, a bit of background on this set. Um, Chip's Challenge Level Pack 1 is a set that was designed to be a legal replacement for Chips Challenge 1 that people could freely download since technically Chips Challenge 1 is copyrighted material. So we figured as a community, why not put together a set that accomplishes a lot of the same things that this set or the original set did. So this set was born and like the original set, it contains lesson levels, which uh, were alluded to in the story here uh, to begin things. 
And before we begin things, I'm going to just point your attention to this version of Tile World that we're using, because this is completely different than anything that's been on the channel so far. This is actually Tile World 2.x. I think this is 2.1, if I'm not mistaken. But starting with version 2, we've now got this bluish interface, which is pretty nice. Um, the display stuff has kind of been moved around and looks a little different. In fact, the the digits here kind of look a little similar to what's in Microsoft Chips Challenge, albeit a little bit less square. And now we've got this bar here that indicates what your solution is and how much time it takes compared to the overall amount of time that you get. You can also, um, handily enough, replay your solution, which is tracked with this progress bar right here. And you can speed up or slow down the solution by using this speed uh, dial right here, which is really neat. However, I'm not going to be playing back any solutions here. I'm just going to be playing through the levels themselves. So let's get started with Key Pyramid. Read the hint. Collect all the required chips to open up a socket and exit. Use keys to open doors. Green keys can be used infinitely. Alright, so most of this stuff, if you've kept up with the channel and watched my uh, Chips Challenge Let's Plays, is pretty uh, self-explanatory. If you haven't, then welcome aboard. This is a really fun game, one of my favorites of all time. And, oh, there's the exit right there. It's a nice place for it at the top of the pyramid. So yeah, this is um, one of the lesson levels, and what we did for these as the CCLP1 staff um, is that we decided to take the best levels of certain level categories. That kind of went for the whole set for the most part, but it also went for the lessons as far as what was being taught. So for instance, this was the highest rated lesson that had to do with keys and doors and whatnot. And this level was designed by Tyler Sontag. So this is a new thing here that you can see. We can see who the designer is, which is stored in a separate file um, that was distributed with a set called a CCX file. That's also where the story for the set is located. So now we can actually read that in the program, which is pretty cool. All right, so I did not mean to use the mouse there. Let's move on to slip and slide. Skates and suction boots let you move freely on ice and force floors. You can step off force floors while moving. So one of the things we try to do is we try to explain a little bit more about what the elements were while giving people the freedom to experiment with how they could interact with them, such as stepping off here, and then taking this path to get to the suction boots here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing you might notice about this level is that unlike the, uh, the boot tutorial in the original Chips Challenge, this one actually um, divides the boots between this level and another level, which is pretty cool. And this level was the first of quite a few dis, uh, designed by Henry Potts, who is quite an accomplished designer, although he's only released a few levels. Present Company. So all of Henry's levels um, had a sort of numbered lesson title structure uh, that said lesson the first, lesson the second, and so on. So we renamed all of his levels that were lessons. Flippers let you swim. Fire boots let you walk through fire. Watch out for moving objects. We decided to use that wordings to cover blocks, even though they haven't been introduced yet. We've also made some changes here because the original level had thieves as part of the design, but we didn't want to introduce those quite yet. Also made by Henry. Block Party. Blocks can be pushed by chip to blow up bombs and build bridges. So here we're actually introduced to dirt, although the hint doesn't mention it. And we got our first little puzzle here. We got to get across here. But we're going to need the help of some tools here, including this key. Well, I guess that's the only tool we're going to need help from. So let's go ahead and push all of our stuff up this way. Alright, new area now. So we got a few choices here. That looks like the exit area. Uh, let's go this way first. I don't think it really matters what order you do this in, but uh, I'll try to make it a little easy on myself here. So yeah, this level basically teaches you about the properties of blocks. It shows you that you can push blocks around like that to get to stuff, which is pretty cool. Get this guy here. 
This was by far and away the highest block, highest rated block pushing level. All right, this was made by Tyler Sontag. Next up is facades. Blue walls can be fake. Recessed walls appear as you cross them. Some walls are permanently invisible. That one is not, but these ones definitely are. You can go through here. Good news is, is that the outer walls are all real, so you don't have to worry about those. These walls are uh, visible, or appearing walls. All right, and we've got some recessed walls here. You could cook this level by stepping back from this, any of these walls, but I'm not going to do that. All right, so that's it for facades, another Henry lesson. All right, when insects attack. So this is our first look at bugs in Paramecia. Yellow bugs turn left at every opportunity, and Paramecia turn right at every opportunity. Dirt and gravel block monsters. So we use the term yellow bugs because there's been quite a bit of debate among Chips Challenge players over what those bugs are actually called. Some people call them just bugs. Some people call them bees. A few people call them ants. So we figured we'd just say yellow bugs. And that was by Tyler again. All right, moving on to under pressure. So this one teaches us about trap buttons. As long as a block, monster, or chip holds down a brown button, a corresponding bear trap is opened. Alright, so we got three traps here, along with three buttons. And these look like they're connected vertically, so we'll run with that. We've also got this glider that can go around here. Uh, let's go this way. I'm not going to release the glider. Let's make things easy. I guess he would just go in the trap, but it's alright. There we go. Another Henry level. Excellent level. Switcheroo. Green buttons control toggle doors. Blue buttons control tanks. Red buttons activate clone machines. So this uh, level actually introduces you to the other three buttons, which is kind of an interesting approach compared to the half and half uh, method that the original sets used with the red and brown in one lesson and green and blue in another. So you can see here that the uh, clone machines are controlled by these red buttons, and so we have to trap the ball over there. Then we got some tank stuff here, which is pretty easy stuff. Not too bad. All right. Whoa, I almost died there. All right, there we go. And that was yet another level by Henry. Swept away. The thief tile steals your foot gear. Teleporters transport you to another teleporter. So this is the only lesson level in the set that I designed. Um, it was originally a part of a... Did I just do that? Let's start over. It was originally part of a set of lesson levels that were all alliterative. And I think the original title was Stupendous Steal. Um, referring to the thief stealing your stuff. Which was a really terrible title, I'm just going to be honest. But I think this worked out a lot better. So yeah, you can test out the teleports and how they work with reverse reading order and all that here. I don't know if it's the most clear demonstration of that. That's probably my only real regret about this. But I think it works okay. And we get the remaining chips right there. I use that chip arrangement because it reminded me of Joshua Bones levels. Which is our, one of the sets of levels I took inspiration from. Alright, we've got a story bit. Flushed with success, Chip strutted into the next level, only to find himself trapped in a claustrophobic corridor facing a green door. Just as he began hunting around for the key, the buzz of a hidden loudspeaker announced the return of the voice he had been longing to hear. You made it, Chip! Excellent! Melinda cried. I was a little worried, but you clearly have the instincts of a true bitbuster. Did the tutorials help your, help your memory recover at all? Not that I can tell, he sighed. Melinda, why don't you help refresh my memory? Who are these bitbusters you've been talking about? We are, she explained with pride. We're the school computer club, a meeting place for some of the smartest people around. And you were one of us since about a year ago when you completed all the perilous puzzles in the old clubhouse. I did, Chip exclaimed. That sounds really cool. I wish I could remember. It'll come back, Melinda said bracingly. But yes, you were amazing. 
your overall score nearly equaled even mine. And, she added tenderly, I don't know many people who could claim that. Uh, thanks, Chip said, heat flooding his face. He cleared his throat and hastily changed the subject. So, uh, then what, can you explain where I am and what I'm doing here? Melinda's voice took on a note of regret. Well, at our midterm meeting, the Bitbusters decided that our old clubhouse was just getting too run down and decrepit for us to use. Everything was breaking down. Teleporters were redirecting, a teeth monster lost itself in the labyrinth, and one clone machine went haywire and flooded an entire level with walkers. So we agreed that it was time to close the clubhouse for good and build a new one. Teeth monsters? Walkers? Chip wondered. Those sound kind of familiar. I wonder if, if I'll be encountering them in this challenge. Now, Melinda continued, we need to test it and make sure it's ready for initiating fresh recruits. As a member who can still remember the challenges faced by beginners, you volunteered for the task. And here you are, already finished with a tutorial. Nearly finished, Chip asked, excited. So what's next? I won't give anything away, Melinda laughed, but I will say that this next level is special. It is both the last tutorial and the first full level of the challenge. After this, the puzzles will be harder and the hints much um, scarcer, so start putting what you've relearned to good use. Now, I'd better stop talking and let you get chipping. We won't be able to contact you as often the further in you go, but I know you've got this, so good luck until we meet again. With that, she was gone, but it seemed to Chip that he could still feel her presence watching over him. He knew somehow that she would never be, be far. Encouraged, he, took, he turned back to the level at hand. Somewhere there must be a green key. All right. So this is the basically the review level for the challenge, graduation. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of a rundown of all the different things that you can, uh, you've learned about. Um, interestingly enough, though, the level set from which this level uh, originated had this as level one. I think it was originally meant to encapsulate all the the lessons in one fell swoop, but here it was uh, selected to be the review level. Let's see here. There's an exit there, but we can't get to it from here. All right. Let's just go and touch all the blue walls. And we definitely can't get to it at all. All right. So now we've got a block pushing thing. And looks like the middle is the logical approach here. So let's do that. Nothing there. It's a dead end. All right, so we've got a larger room here with lots of elemental things. Triangles, you could say. Do some item swapping. Ah, we've got ourselves a little button thing here. I like button things. Button things are fun. So we just need to make sure the tank is trapped there and then hit the blue button again. Perfect. All right. Trap button. Holds down that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That should do. Beware of the teeth. We actually added that hint so people knew that these were dangerous. So interestingly enough, you can with Microsoft Ships Challenge use the teleport skip glitch, to, which is basically using the mouse while clicking on the teleport as a monster is entering it. Um, to skip over a teleport and avoid that whole second section there, or at least most of it. So this is a level by Marcus O, who is currently doing a CCLP4 Let's Play, if you haven't seen that yet. All right, so on to basketball. Psych, psych, psych! Bounce back and forth to collect chips and shoes. Owie-oop! All right, so this is a pretty simple item swapper with some dodging included. Just go around and get all the things. This level was uh, kind of special to me because it was originally a part of a... Wow, that was bad. It was originally part of a set called Daniel B1. And that set came out a long time ago, like back in 2002, maybe three. I think it was 2003. And I remember really enjoying it because it was one of the few sets that actually bore resemblance to the original game with 
its rather simple designs and straightforward nature. Everything was all, for the most part at least, was scaled fairly well as well, and this level was is no exception. By Daniel Bomeister, Leave no stone unturned. Sometimes things are hidden under blocks. Alright, so we got a bridge across these, and we're also collecting chips. I just realized we don't have the sound on. I am so sorry about that. Let me turn the sound on. There we go. I don't know if that's loud enough, but hopefully it is. That ought to help point through this, too. Alright, so we were just collecting chips under the blocks while the bug's chasing us around. Okay, now it gets a little more interesting because now we've got a little bit more claustrophobic space within which to push everything. So, we gotta make sure we're unraveling this correctly. So, like this one right here, I didn't want to push that block all the way up since ultimately I'm gonna need to push this block down to get that block. And we got fire boots. That's nice. I appreciate the fact that this level teaches you about fire without actually subjecting you to death by fire under a block. Alright, so now we've got a little bit of dodging here at the end, but nothing too crazy. Alright, and this is the first level in the set by Andrew Menzies, who's going to have quite a few levels in CCLP1, so be on the lookout for those. The Monster Cages. I believe this is another one. This is basically where we learn about the different monsters and how they move. Including the fact that gliders can go in water, which is pretty awesome. It's also the first major chip collecting level as well. So I'm not going to explain how all the monsters move. You guys should know that. Or if you don't, you should be able to figure it out. Gliders are the only creatures that can survive in water. Alright. Excellent. Okay, I'm just going to let those guys wrap around so we don't have to worry about an unpleasant chip collecting situation with them. Actually, I think that would be an impossible chip collecting situation if they ever got in a loop. Alright, so that was the monster cages. Moving on to wedges. So this is a level that teaches you about this move you can do here where you can just push the blocks like that. And then push the middle one off to the side. Most people in the Chips Challenge arena call this a wedge. Although I haven't really heard the term lately, to be honest. Alright, so it looks like there's another teleport over there, and we need to go right through this one to get to it, so let's do that on the way back. It's been a while since I've played a lot of these levels, so this is a fun blast from the past here. Okay, we are almost done. Just gotta go through all the doors and exits. This was by Ben Hornlitz. And now Twister. This is another ship collecting level. And interestingly enough, you can actually get through this level while not breaking um, the cycle of getting ships. So in other words, you can constantly be collecting ships. All right, I think we've already messed it up, but yeah. We'll just see what, where this takes us. Okay, I think we're on the right track, actually. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this. So, like the whole level forms a nice whirlpool kind of pattern. Okay, I totally missed this part here. That's alright, though. Now 
Okay, at least I did this section correctly. I know I'm not really optimizing this, but it's fun to try to be efficient. Alright, almost there. Okay, yeah, I definitely botched this part up. Alright, only three seconds behind the bold time. And this was by Stefan Newcomer, or Newcomer, um, who goes by the name Lessonath, I believe, on the CC community. Tetragons. Alright, this level is pretty fun. It's very simple, you just collect the chips and avoid all the monsters. Nothing too crazy. I do like these introductory levels because I feel like they give a much less steep difficulty curve than Nuts and Bolts did with the original game, and that's always nice. Particularly if you're new to playing this game. Even if you're not, like, and you're, you're basically like a veteran who's trying to get a refresher course on everything, I feel like this is much gentler than CCLP3 was. All right, time to build some bridges here. Get that block in place, so we just have to turn it once there. Do the same here. So yeah, there's another group of blocks here on the other side in case you came through this um, recessed wall over here, which is pretty cool. And I barely made that one, but we thankfully we did. Alright, we are almost done. Excellent, alright. Got all the chips and exits. This level was made by Rosa Bellis. I'm not sure if that's a real name or just a username, so we assumed it was just a username. Tiny. Alright, this certainly is tiny. Let's get the chip there behind the uh, thief first. And now I'll go ahead and do this. It also allows us to free that fireball and let it go in the water before we press the block or push the block there. And this was made by Ida R, who designed I want to say some CCLP3 levels as well. Square dancing, blobs move randomly at half of chip's speed. So yeah, blobs were the only enemy, if I'm not mistaken, um, aside from teeth, which we're already introducing graduation that weren't included in uh, the monster cages, so this is our introduction to them. And this level is, thankfully, a lot less harrowing than playing blob nets, I will say that. This level is a lot of fun. It's nice and open, you can just go wherever you'd like, and there's not a whole lot of strict rigidity with respect to where all the the chips are and how you have to approach them and all that stuff. Alright, two, one. Where's the last chip? I feel like we missed something over here. Yeah, here we go. Perfect. Alright. As he gratefully exited the blob infested ballroom, Chip felt a stirring in his memory. A faint recollection began to resurface of another distant dance and him and Melinda. Is that right? He thought incredulously. Did I really take a girl like her to a dance? The more of the memory returned, the more sure he became that it had indeed happened, and a glow of pride filled him. I remember now, he shouted excitedly. That was how I finally plucked up the courage to try the Bitbuster's initiation. I had spent weeks working up the nerve to ask Melinda to e-prom, but she said she'd only go with a member of the club. So then I decided I had to join, or die trying, he laughed with joyful relief. I'm starting to remember. Just wait till I tell Melinda. He hurried into the next room, hoping to hear her voice on the loudspeaker. But all that awaited him there was hard, unfeeling static. Feel the static. Alright. So this is a maze, looks like. Can't go through there, or there. What is this? Find the red key, green button, yellow key, fire boots, blue key, and exits. 
And that is, I believe, the order in which we actually have to find them. And press the green button. There's the red key. Make sure we comb to this area. We don't have fire boots yet, so we can't really go there. Okay, what do we have over here? Yellow key. All right. And that does not lead any to anything. Okay, the yellow key could be used over this way. And we get the fire boots. We don't want to go through the thief, so we can actually use them over here. And we got a blue key. That ball must be facing east or west. Okay, so we have to lose the fire boots to go back here to use this. Excellent. And we actually have extra chips, which is nice. And we can exit. Now, remember this tank. Alright? This tank's going to be important. And we'll do one last level for the day. Chip Suey. Oh, that last lef level was by me, Katokula. Uh, I think the ship can be accessed. Oh, it's down there. Alright. Totally did not uh, check that out. Alright, so this is simple enough. We just bridge to flippers. And now we have a little Force 4 gauntlet to get through, but it's nothing too crazy. Alright, this kind of looks like Lesson 8 from the original game. And we've got cloning to do. Can we blow up that top bomb? Nope. Come on, blow up the top one. There you go. You don't really need to, but it's rather nice to do it. Alright, to get the yellow key, we need to explore this other path. Alright, a little item swapper to do here. And we can leave with a skate in tow and go this away. Four chips to go. Alright, toggle area here. And you got some fireballs to distract us, slash make it difficult to get through the fire here. And we got some trap buttons, which need to be filled. And then the exit. Alright, another Henry level. So, we will continue with the next part of the story next time. So, until then, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. If you did, be sure to smash that like button, and I will catch you on the flip side.